Hello everyone and welcome to this PMDG Boeing 737-700 for Microsoft Flight Simulator demonstration video. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a member of PMDG's tech team and a real-world Boeing 737 pilot. The aircraft you're seeing in this video is a pre-release beta version that's still work in progress. There are things to be added, for example the trim sound is missing from the current version, so bear with me and be aware, you will see some minor issues every now and then in this video, which is totally normal and which PMDG are still working on. Also in use in this video, I have Sim Toolkit Pro, which is a very nice tool for logging your flights, but it also offers, for example, access to the Navigraph web suite offering their Jefferson chart service. Those are copyright of Jefferson and provided to the simulation community by Navigraph. This being said, today we're going to start with a series of failures coming up over the next couple of weeks probably. And today we're going to start with the hydraulic manual reversion. We're sitting on the runway 06 in Dortmund and we have planned on the Gamminghausen 8 Quebec departure so it's going straight out, taking us with a right turn over and then we join radio 339 and mount to Gamminghausen VOR, climbing 5,000 feet initially and later on up to flight level 330. Now, these videos are not intended as tutorials, but they are just a demonstration of what the PMDG 737-700 can do. I do have to say that these videos are flown as close as possible to what we would be doing in real life. However, there are shortcomings since I am operating single pilot here and there have also been simplifications done to the procedures where it fits in order to be better usable in the flight simulation environment. Now this said, the PMDG 737 is a very capable aircraft in terms of failure scenarios and if you have a look into the introduction document you will find plenty of possible failures that you can go through and there are great reference handbooks available if you just google for them so that you can handle those realistically. I am today using the QRH that's been provided with the original PMDG 737 NGX release. Meanwhile over 10 years ago I'm getting old. Now I'm using this QRH that's based on the Boeing version that was actually licensed by Boeing back then and included back then. As far as I know it's not going to be part of the product as it will release on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now of course that's subject to change. My information might not be final and I'm not a PMDG representative. Alright enough talking let's do some flying. We are on the runway in Dortmund, the aircraft is ready to go, so all we gotta do is turn those lights on. And that completes our checklists. So, stabilized. Brake is released, set takeoff thrust. look at that, the auto throttle is just popping up there. That did happen in the past a few times, but I believe it's something that's still about to be fixed. Inlands. Checked. Gear up. Down F. Command A, buck up.
flaps one. Speed check, flaps one. Flaps up, speed check, flaps up. Flaps up, no lights. Wiener, set standard. Passing flight level 37, climbing 250 after deck of checklist. Air yeah, climb press 1.8, climbing. Set. Altimeters. Standard, passing flight level 48, climbing 250. That's the after takeoff checklist complete. We're cleared above level 150, so we're going full climb thrust. I still find those visuals of Microsoft Flight Simulator really amazing, and ju I just can't get enough looking outside and actually enjoying the scenery while flying along. Now the aim in this video is to show you how a flight like this would be operated in real life, so I'm not going to do a lot of talking. If you're into that, I recommend watching some of the popular streamers, as I'm sure they will have a little bit more entertainment while I'm trying to focus on the airplane itself here. So, passing flight level 105, climbing 250, 10 checks. That's the fuel balanced with four pumps on, lights off, APU off, air cannon press, 4.2, climbing and set. Fast belts, in auto, recall, checked, monitoring 1 to 1.5 now. And that's the 10 checks complete. Now when the failure is going to happen, things will get busy quite quickly, since I will have to do the jobs of both the pilot flying and the pilot monitoring at the same time. Therefore, my hand flying might not be that accurate when I'm focusing on the system stuff. This of course would be very different in a real life situation, where you have one pilot focusing on controlling the airplane, and the other flying, and the other reading the checklists. We do have a master portion here. State mole function. Right, it's master portion, hydraulics, and we have three low pressure lights there. Okay, that's system A. No, it's four low pressure lights. That's the autopilot disconnect. Right, that's understood. 
going to cancel the master portion. Flag path management always takes priority. So what we're going to do is Mayday, 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 PMDG 737. We have a flag control and hydraulic problem. Request to maintain flag level 180. Alright, so we are going to level the airplane off here at 180. In the 737, pitch slightly above the horizon in the region of about 2.5 degrees is usually going to give you a level flight and if you're using a power in the range of 60 to 70 percent and one that is usually going to provide a good airspeed 60 percent and one usually gives you approximately between 220 230 knots ish right so i will keep flying the airplane here PMTG737 is going to maintain the present heading. That's heading select, altitude hold 18,000. We've got another master caution here, flight controls. It's your damper off, field of press with flight control low pressure lights there as well. Okay, now that the flight path is under control, We'll have a look at the non-normal checklist, which we, which I did prepare over here. So we have four low-pressure lights. That's going to be the manual version non-normal checklist. And my radios. So, manual reversion or loss of system A and system B non-normal checklist. That's associated with a couple lights here. We have the flight controls A and B low pressure lights. We do have those. And the hydraulic pumps. Engine 1, electric 2, electric 1, engine 2 low pressure lights. Those are all four illuminated as well. So, are you ready for the condition statement? Then condition. Hydraulic system A and B pressures are low. That seems to be the case. And verify that here on the system play as well. We do have some quantities, but the pressure is zero. So be really careful when you're going into the non-normal checklist to make sure that you actually are running the correct checklist for the failure that you're encountering. Right, system A and B flight control switches both confirm standby rudder. So that's the flight control switches A and B confirmed, confirmed, standby rudder. Airplane keeps flying normally, very good. Your damper switch on. On. And the your damper light is going out. System A and B hydraulic pump switches all off. That's the A and B hydraulic pump switches. All off. Continue on next page. So we have a list here of inoperative items that we all have to have a look at. That's autopilot A and B in up. Can confirm that, they did trip off. All flight spoilers in up. Roll rate will be reduced and speed brakes will not be available in flight. Let's pass the portion flight control again. It's standby rudder on. That's correct, we did just switch it on. Cancelling this. Just bring this fire path back under control here. So, trailing edge flaps, normal hydraulic system in up. The trailing edge flaps can be operated with the alternate electrical system. Alternate flap extension time to flaps 15 is approximately 2 minutes. Right, we'll keep that in mind for our approach planning. The leading edge flaps and slats, normal hydraulic system in up. The leading edge flaps and slats can be extended with a standby hydraulic pressure. Once extended, they cannot be retracted. In other words, we are going to have some increased drag there that we cannot get rid of that's going to significantly affect our fuel in case of the diversion. 
main landing gear normal hydraulic system in up, manual gear extension is needed. Auto brakes in up, ground spoilers in up, landing distance will be increased. We are going to calculate that with uh, top cats when we are adding there. Master caution. That's air conditioning of scheduled descent. Alright. We can just set the flight altitude down. And that's going to fix that. So, normal and alternate brakes in up. Inboard and outboard brakes have accumulator pressure only. On landing, apply steady brake pressure without modulating the brakes. Right, this is important because you basically only have two or three attempts of pressing the brakes. Once you have used those up, there will be no more brake pressure available and the brakes are not going to do anything for you anymore. Both thrust reverses normal pressure in up. Thrust reverses will deploy and retract at a slower rate. Right, that's understood. No spills during in up. Do not attempt to taxi the airplane after stopping. Understood. Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Plan for flap 15 landing. Set VRF 15 or VRF ice. If any of the following conditions apply, set VRF ice, which equals VRF 15 plus 10 knots. Engine anti ice will be used during landing. Wing anti ice has been used any time during the flight. Icing conditions were encountered during the flight, and the landing temperature is below 10 degrees. Note: When VRF ice is needed, the wind additive should not exceed 10 knots. Plan to extend flaps to 15 using alternate flap extension. Note the drag penalty with the leading edge devices extended may make it impossible to reach an alternate field. Plan for manual gear extension. Note when the landing gear is bit lower manually it cannot be retracted. The drag penalty with gear extended may make it impossible to reach an alternate field. Check the non-normal configuration landing distance table in the advisory information section of the performance in flight chapter. Losing a bit of altitude here, going to correct that before continuing with the checklist. Do note at this moment that there is no need to rush anything at all. The airplane can be flown safely, even though the control forces are a lot greater. Now that's something most of you are probably not going to notice in the simulator. You will feel it being more sluggish as it is in real life, since you are now operating the control surfaces with cables rather than hydraulic actuators. And you will feel that on the flight controls, which is very, very nice. Alright, let's continue with the checklist here. Note, the crossing capability of the airplane is greatly reduced. Do not arm the auto brake for landing. Do not arm the speed brakes for landing. On touchdown, apply steady brake pressure without modulating the brakes. Do not attempt to taxi the airplane after stopping. And that's the checklist complete except deferred items. Then just looking ahead a little bit for the deferred items, we have the standard descent checklist with the difference here on the landing data that it's going to be VRF 15. And with a go around procedure review, standard approach checklist, we do have the alternate flap extension, which is quite a lengthy one, manual gear extension as well, and we have an additional deferred item than the landing checklist, which is going to be different in two items. That would be the checklist complete, so now let's have a look upwards. Go back to where we left off with plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Now we'll have to consider a few different things here. So I suggest starting with the I suggest starting with a decision making model. For example, my airline is using the Piozzi model. You can Google that to read up on it. So let's start with it. What kind of problem are we facing? We have the obvious don't state that. We know about the manual re reversion. So problems now are going to be airplane controllability. We'll, we'll need a longer final to stabilize the approach. It's going to take longer to extend the landing gear and the flaps. And it is going to impair our flight control management here since I'm sitting in the flight deck alone without a second pilot at the moment. Then our stopping devices are significantly reduced. We we'll only have one or two brake applications. So we will definitely go for a long runway here. Now, starting with the options that we have available. There's Frankfurt over there. Then, looking backwards, we also have Cologne in the area over here. Then there is Hannover, Berlin. 
Düsseldorf. Our departure at Moon Airport, Dortmund, has a fairly short runway, 2,000 meters only, so we can rule that one out. So let's start gathering some information then. I'm going to start by looking for the weather at the different airports, starting with Frankfurt since that is the nearest. However, I do note it says the nearest suitable airport, so that does not necessarily mean just because you're 20 miles of Frankfurt, you are going to go to Frankfurt. No. We are currently at 18,000 feet, that means we need about 60 miles anyway, so anything in a region of about 80 to 100 miles is definitely suitable and still counts as nearest. So looking at Frankfurt, it's relatively calm wind, 040 at 13, it's runway 07 down in Frankfurt, so it's coming just at a slight angle off, however it's variable to 010, so there is a little bit of crosswind there in Frankfurt. Apart from that, it's Kaffel K. So Frankfurt has good conditions. Now let's see Cologne. It's also 040 at 11. Slightly variable. That's basically the same conditions as Frankfurt. Rombe is uh, 06 over there, which is rather short, and they've got a long runway 32 or 14. We also have Dusseldorf. That's 070 at 13, runway 05 over there, so it's fairly on the nose. And the runway is about 2,800 meters long, if I'm not mistaken. And then looking ahead, we also have Stuttgart. That's the runway 2507, so the wind is fairly cross there. So Stuttgart is probably not one of the good options. Right, so... Looking at other items there... Another option is, do we have maintenance available? Now, the airline I fly for has a base in Cologne, in the area, where they do have maintenance available. We don't have any base in uh, Frankfurt, or Düsseldorf, or Stuttgart. So the one option that does have maintenance is going to be Cologne. Right, so now, we've got to select a place that we go to. Now I say, looking at the weather of everything and looking at the availability to fix the airplane, call engineers, and to further transport the passengers, I'd say Cologne is the best option to go to. So at this point, we decide to divert to Cologne. They do have a 3,800 meter runway available as well. Wind is slightly cross over there, but that's not going to be too much. Alright, so at this point, the first officer would start flying when I start preparing the diversion. Can already execute the diversion over here in the Navigraph system. So I do want to add a new alternate airport here, which is going to be Cologne. We'll save that. And we are actually going to go to Cologne. Runway 32. Well, there's wind approximately 80 degrees off, but runway 32 seems to be the better option here over runway um, 14. Runway 3 to right, it's going to be with the ILS approach. At this point, I can already tell ATC that we are going to divert towards Cologne and get an initial vector going there just so that we don't get too far off. Something around 300 degrees here.
you can kind of see when the moving and control column of the airplane is reacting a little bit more sluggish than it would normally do and that's totally expected and that is actually what the real airplane would do as well and PBTG did a tremendous job simulating that now the only thing I would need personally is a hardware force feedback yoke that would actually give me the control forces because flying this this long is going to take a physical toll on the pilot that's also the reason why I'm just keeping constant thrust so that I don't have any trim requirements here and as long as the airspeed is in an acceptable range I'm just letting it slide a little bit in order to reduce trim requirements and make flying the airplane easier so the FMC there says using reserve fuel now we can forget about that and now I'm going to insert the diversion so that's going towards Cologne Rival ILS 3 to right. We won't need any transition there since we will take radar vectors. There we go, we are almost on the extended center line already. Change the cruise level to 180, that should give us more accurate top of descent for this one. And make things a little bit easier. We're just going to start the descent right now. Now, with these kind of problems, you don't have to worry about stuff like noise abatement or fuel efficiency anymore as long as you have sufficient fuel to reach your Auckland airport. Now well, let's start our descent. We're going out here, it says plan for a flap 15 landing. So, the FMC tells us we're going to use 200 kilos of fuel. That means 85.3 as landing weight. That's in flap 15. Is in set Vera 15 or Vera ice. Now, we did not fly through any icing. I don't see any icing conditions outside. A good hint, by the way, is the windshield wiper because that's about the first place where you would see signs of actual icing occurring on the airframe. So, if there's no ice here, then chances are there is no ice on your wings as well, which you could see on the leading edges here. So we don't take VRF ice, we just take VRF 15. Alright, plan to extend flaps to 15 using alternate flap extension. Note the drag penalty with the leading edge devices extended may make it impossible to reach an alternate field. Right, that's understood. We're going to take a very long final here so that we have sufficient time. Plan for manual gear extension. That is known. And check the non normal configuration land distance table in the advisory information chapter or other approved source. Said earlier, we're going to use Topcat for that. So here we have it, Topcat, Cologne, free to ride, I did it already pre-insert in operative items, hydraulic, loss of system A and B. We set the weather, the worst condition here is 070 degrees at uh, 11 knots, giving us 4 knots of tailwind. However, there is no sense changing for Romeo 1 for left either since then it's 010 at 11. Temperature, 19 degrees, 1011. It's a dry runway. We have not normal flap 15 landing. We said 58.3 is our landing weight. Air condition on, anti-ice of manual landing, of course. Approach speed increase is going to be 5 knots. And it's going to be maximum manual braking. Computing that, it says we do need 1,533 meters of runway, giving us the remaining 2,403 meters in case something further happens. Now, I am just trying to see if there is something for brakes failing available here, just so that we get some additional data, but it doesn't seem so. So we'll have to look with the data we have available here now. Right. So, we have read through this earlier on. So let's actually start doing an approach briefing there. Threats for this arrival, well obviously we do have 
a lot of workload on the final approach and therefore we got to remain focused first fly the airplane aviate navigate communicate and anything else comes thereafter then we do need a longer distance than usual however we will do maximum manual braking here bring it to a stop on the runway do not taxi off and we have to keep the brakes pressed and not start modulating them all right i'd say those are the main threats the manual gear extension also is something of course in case of go around we will not be able to retract the gear now in case of go around we will have to apply the thrust slowly so there is a chance if we have to go around last second that we will touch down on the wrong way that's not going to be any kind of problem if we have to then we have to all right then looking at the fmc there's nothing in the descent pad really the only thing i'm going to put in is the transition level at six zero fakes rings it's going to be a runway three two right reaching level 100 about 60 percent of thrust should give us a very nice airspeed to maintain here i don't want to descend below flight 0100 here because that would put us into airspace class echo so that means there would be vfr traffic flying down there so we'd have additional workload looking out the windows trying to miss the or trying not to miss those uh, VFR guys. Runway 3 to right, I'm going to put a 10 mile ring in here just for reference as we usually do it and I'll also put a 15 mile ring in which is going to cover us for the uh, manual gear extension and the flap extension. Right, looking at the legs page we have the ILS approach for runway 3 to right. That's starting at Rarix in 3000 feet. We have a check altitude 4.4 miles out. That's the Fox Fox at uh, 1660. And we are going down to a minimum of uh, 502. We've still got to set that. And I'm going to do this now. This unfortunately does take a little bit of time and I'm hoping that PMDG is going to find a method of setting the minimums more quickly here. I hope that's going to come for release, but maybe not. We'll see about that. There are most certainly more important things. And I guess most of you will be able to wait and live with us for the initial release if that means you get the airplane earlier. Right, the missed approach. Well, there is missed approach routing here. However, to simplify, to simplify things, we are going to request radar vectors from ATC that are going to help us to make things a little bit easier in case of the missed approach. Alright, so frequency is going to be triple 1.1 still have to set these oh boy approach preparation could have been better since by the time you start the briefing you're supposed to have all of this done but then again flying a single pilot here if you guys excuse flight differences from ooh, the way we do this in real life right course of 316 and 316 to come on the other side as well Here we go. I'd say we are about close enough to Cologne that we can continue our descent. All the way down to 3000 feet, 1011 is the curing reach. Alright, so that's this. Um, we calculated our VRF earlier on, so that part is covered. We are going to stop the airplane on the runway though, and we'll get a tow truck to get us off. All right, so let's do the default items descent checklist then. Pressurization, land alt, 300 feet. That's the airport elevation there in Cologne. Recall, the, that is flight controls and hydraulics. The hydraulics is known, flight controls is known as well. Recall checked, order breaks off. Landed data, fear of 15, minimums 502. And approach briefing is complete. Descent checklist complete. So, go around procedure review there. Let's go ahead with that. We can already proceed direct to Rarix for the approach. I 
Now one thing to note here, we've got to do a little bit of careful energy management since... Yeah, level change. Always watch your FMA. Now I know why the flight director's been off earlier. So one thing to consider is energy management since we don't have the speed brake available. Now, we can use the green banana here. We've set it at 3,000 feet, so we know that we're more than safe. We can also use the vertical situation display, which if you turn it out far enough, you see you are able to get to the ground far before you your final approach fix. So we know that we are covered here. Alright, so go-around procedure review. Do the normal go-around procedure except advance thrust to go-around thrust smoothly and sm slowly to avoid excessive pitch-up. Be prepared to trim. Limit back angle to 15 degrees when airspeed is less than minimum maneuver speed. So that's something. I will just set the back angle limit to 15 over here since we don't expect any major turns before the missed approach now. Approach checklist done. Altimeters 1011. Set three times. Approach checklist complete. So alternate flap extension. Let's read ahead of this so that we are prepared to do it when we get there. During flap extension, set the flap lever to the desired flap position. Portion 230 knots maximum during alternate flap extension. We have 230 already, I'm going to reduce it further. All the way to the up speeds in order to have less load on the system there. Alternate flaps master switch arm. Note the landing gear configuration when it may sound to the flaps are between 10 and 15 and the landing gear are retracted. Note the amber leading edge flaps transit light will stay illuminated until the flaps approach the flap 10 position. Note operation within the lower amber airspeed band may be needed until the leading edge flaps transit light extinguishes. Alright, that's all understood. Caution, if flap symmetry occurs, release the switch immediately. There is no asymmetry protection. So we are going to watch the indicator slowly to make sure that the flaps are not going to go asymmetric. And then alternate flap positions which hold down to extend flaps to 15 on the schedule. As flaps are extending, slow to respective maneuvering speed. And then we can start with the manual gear extension already. That's going to be landing gear lever into the off position. That's where it is already. Manual gear extension handle is pulled. The up lock is released when the handle is pulled to its limit. And the related red landing gear indicator light illuminates, indicating up lock release. Wait 15 seconds after the last manual gear extension handle is pulled, then landing gear lever down. Right, so we are prepared for this now. We'll just go ahead and do our first check here while we're still at the time and while we are approaching Raix. So the frequencies are triple 1.1 on both sides. Rings are around the wrong way, 10 miles and 15 miles as a reminder there. Idents, India Kilo Echo November. Let us check with the chart. And India Kilo Echo November. Standby instruments are set and the course is 316. The approach checklist is already complete, so that part is covered. Alright, it does take two minutes to get the flaps out, so we are going to start doing that now. Expecting Rarix in three minutes, so hopefully we are covered by the time we reach Rarix. So, alternate flap extension. Set the flap lever to the desired position. Alternate flap master switch arm. Speed is below 230 knots at the alternate flap master switch. Armed. Right, we are aware of the possible configuration warning. We are aware of the leading edge flap transit light and operation within the lower amber airspeed band is noted as well. Alternate flap position switch, hold down to extend the flaps to 15 on schedule. So let's go flaps 1. Set the flap lever here. Now, we're going to hold, switch down. I'm just keeping my left mouse held down now, and that is uh, going to keep this to hold the switch in the position and when holding the right mouse switch at the same time I can still look around that's uh, thanks to the Microsoft Flight Simulator engine here you can see how the flaps are taking really long to come out now even into the first position I do have a hardware control to um, set the engine right everyone I have to apologize I had to urgently leave my simulator and forgot to pause it so, I've reloaded now, and we are back to approaching Cologne. 
The flaps are in 15 now with the alternate extension completed and the next things are alternate landing gear extension. So for that, landing gear lever off, the manual gear extension handle is pulled. The up lock is released when the handle is pulled to its limit. The related wrap landing gear indicator light illuminates, indicating up lock release. So we are going to do this now. We will find the landing gear alternate extension door over here. Pull the first one, pull the second, and pull the third. Then we close the door again. You can see the red lights coming up here. Now we are waiting for 15 seconds after the last manual gear extension handle is pulled and then put the landing gear lever to down. Here, wall of capture. So that's 15 seconds. Landing gear lever down. We do have three green lights. You can already see the runway over there. Start slowing the airplane to the approach speed. Now there is an additional deferred item, which is the ground proximity flap inhibit switch to flap inhibit. So that's the flap inhibit switch. Flap inhibit. Now this warning horn, you should not hear it this moment. Cut out button, unfortunately, is working here. I'm going to report this to the PPG team for a possible fix. So now that we're established, Hopefully we're going to slowly reduce our speed and run the landing checklist. Engine start switch is simply continuous. That's continuous. Speed brake is down, detent. You can see it by the light not being on over here. Landing it down, flaps 15, green light. And that is the landing checklist complete. Also don't need this anymore. You can see I'm trying to reduce the speed very, very slowly here. We are missing quite a bit of drag from the flaps. So it is rather hard to get the speed down on this approach. Stable gate for this one is 500 feet. the ground in Cologne. Now we do have something interesting here. I did not originally plan to do it, but since we have a collapse of the landing gear, there's probably a little bit of smoke coming as well. Let's go into the evacuation checklist here. So, evacuation non-normal checklist. Condition evacuation is needed. Park and brake set? Set. Speed brake lever down? Down. Flap lever 40? Uh, these are an alternate extension, we're not going to get those down at the moment. 
Personalization mode, select the manual. Manual alpha valve switch hold in the open until the alpha valve indication shows fully open. If time allows, verify that the flaps are 40 before the engine start leaving to move to cutoff. Now, in our situation, since we don't expect the flaps to actually come down to 40 at all, the valve is fully open. Engine start leave is both cutoff, cutoff, advise the cabin to evacuate. This is an emergency. Evacuate the aircraft using all available exits. This is an emergency. Evacuate the airplane using all available access. Advise the tower. Mayday, mayday, mayday. PMDG 737 evacuating on the runway. Engine and APU fire switches all. Override and pull. Override, pull, override, pull, override, pull. If an engine or APU fire warning occurs, illuminated fire switch, rotate to the stop and hold for one second. We do not have any engine or APU fire warning here. The over the Lights are also not illuminated, so that's the evacuation non normal checklist complete, and it's time to get out of here. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, I apologize for the cut at the end of the video in the approach. However, I do hope that you found this interesting to see what the airplane can do, and I hope that you like the unexpected evacuation as well. I promise this was not planned. But it's always nice to do something like this, and an unexpected landing or collapse is most certainly something you wouldn't run into every day. But with the landing gear being held by the locks which engage based on the gears falling in by gravity only, and looking at the strong sidewards movements we've had after touchdown, which shouldn't but can happen in a situation like this, then it's not surprising that the landing gears couldn't take the stress of this situation. So this is it for this video. For the next one, let me know in the comments which failure you would like to see next. And then I hope that we're going to see each other next time. Thank you.